guys, it's Anne over at Plant Obsessed, and today we're going to take a look in on the DIY stacked bin. Now let me take you over there, and then we'll take a look at how it was made, and uh, if you want to make it yourself, um, I'll kind of give the instructions on how that happened. So give me one second, and I'll take you over there. As you can see here, I am starting out with the uh, actual sticker that's still on the the bin and you can see that it is a 38 liter 10 gallon Sterlite modular stackable. Um, probably got it at Walmart and then you can also see if you look here that I've dro drilled holes around the edges can't see it as well down here but drilled holes around the edges because it, originally I had intended on keeping the lid on and that just didn't work. Uh, the worms were not happy. So I just leave the lid off now um, so that was my original idea. I'll take you looking on the inside here. And you can see that I took window screen and I hot glued it around. And then on the bottom, let's see if I'll peel back here a little bit. Find some of the holes. Okay, so, and then here's the hole that goes down into the layer below. And then the hole on the layer underneath is very, very tiny because it was meant to be a sump. That hasn't worked out. The little worms just wiggle their butts down there anyway. So I've just made it a three stack DIY bin and it works just fine. All right, now let's get back to the regular story uh, of how this bin is doing. All right, so let's take a look on the inside and see what's going on. I left this top uncovered, hoping that it would dry out because it was previously the bottom. So let's see what it's done. Well, the worms aren't leaving, and it's not getting very much drier. Interesting, because I haven't had a lid on it, no covering whatsoever. Um, you would think at the very least the worms would leave but uh, I guess there's still enough stuff in here to eat to uh, cause them to want to stay. Um, I think there's still a little bit of food in there they probably are, are messing with. I think I'm going to probably do a light migration on this and get them out of here so that I can restart this top layer and um, have them do something constructive. So I'm going to move this layer off and then show you the layer underneath. Okay, here we go. Layer number two. And you can see that there is some really nice castings going on here. I believe I did give them a shirt. Um, I didn't watch the video, so I don't... It's been almost 20 days since I've looked in here so I'm not going to probably see much of a worm ball any place. But there's so many worms in this system that, like, the whole bin is just a worm ball, for real. So I'm just going to fluff everything up here and see what it's doing. Um, you can see that I've got a mixture of the red wigglers, the blue worms, and the European night crawlers. Um, they're all this kind of littler size. Um, you don't see a lot of bigger worms in this system because there's so many. And I think at some point they just quit getting bigger um, for that reason, which is fine. More small worms is fine for me. But you know what? This, this looks like this could probably get harvested pretty soon, too. Um, that, I think, is the skin of a pepper. And this is the skin of a tomato. It's weird. It sounds like plastic, doesn't it? But that's a tomato peel. I kind of smell onion. Oh, there it is. There's the onion peel. So they've eaten everything but the peel. So it's a good thing that I, I brought down some good amount of food for them if they're, if they're down to almost nothing. Let's see. Oh, here's that bag I didn't want to clean. And sure enough, the worms cleaned it for me. It just had all kinds of food stuck to it, and I was like, ugh, I don't want to try and do that. So, I'm now, oops, worm, out. You've done your job, get out. And I can take that out of the bin. So let me kind of continue flipping things, see if we can find anything. Oh, well, 
there we go. Um, the remnants, the last remnants of the pineapple. So it did not grow a pineapple for me. The worms decided to make it food. Maybe because I forgot to feed them for 20 days. But uh, at least they had something left. It's not like they're down to, to nothing here. So they do have a little bit of food on this layer. And then, of course, we have the avocado peels that are probably going to be with us for another couple of months. But this part all really, I'm willing to bet that I could probably um, sift this or, you know, if it ever dried out. I'm going to call this t-shirt done. I think this is just the, uh, look at that worm. Look at that. Get out of there. I think they like playing in like strings and burlap and, and stuff like that. So I'm going to have to leave this on top in hopes that he will climb down out of there. So, but I think this, this string is, or the thread that they sewed the t-shirt with is not cotton. So I'm going to lay that on top and hopefully it will entice them to wiggle themselves out of that string so I can throw it away. So yeah, that looks like the pineapple is all that was left. Okay, so let me move this out of the way and we will look at the bottom layer. All right, here we are at the bottom layer. We've got some corn cobs that are not ready to even snap in half. So there's another one. But this bin is pretty, pretty wet, which makes me a little concerned that the feeding that I have today is probably a little wet. Um, I might want to just put in some dry paper and coconut coir and uh, instead of just putting in my normal bedding because this is certainly wetter than I like to run my bins for sure. But you can see along the edge here, this is pure castings. Isn't that nice? So, getting to be this time of the year where I don't really need to harvest anything because it's the end of my growing season here in Illinois. But, yeah, that's pretty wet. Um, the corn cobs are still here, but that's about it. They've got paper left and a couple of banana stems. But that's that's all they've got down here. So I'm not gonna I'm not gonna feed on this level. I'm just gonna put their food in a central area so I can find it again. Just smells like dirt at this point, or you know castings, which is dirt. All right, I will put the second layer back on again, and probably need to make the decision that that second layer is is probably just as ready to harvest as the upper layer. Um, so I'm probably gonna I'll probably put the food at one end over here, and hopefully I can capture the worms on this. Um, on this level, I'll be able to kept capture them in one in one place. So let me get some dry paper and some food. I'm just using my screen as a scoop, and that's just regular old shredded cardboard with the sh the shredder that I use for everything. And those are Amazon boxes. And let me get them some food. Okay, so here we go. Give them some melon. This has not been frozen, so hopefully it'll it'll take a little bit of time for them to get into it, and then I will come over here and and grab it uh, next time. We'll get in here a little bit faster and see if we can't work out some of the worms, you know, from this level. All right, so let me put the next layer back on. But I think what we're going to do is we're going to do a little bit of a light separation and get the bulk of those worms out and put those castings in a tray to dry so that we can get this top part of the bin working again. OK. 
Okay, so this is light separation, and I have a very, very bright light overhead. And so I will just let it run on time lapse, and you can see them all dive down. Okay, so they have, for the most part, dived down a little bit, and I'm going to just pull off the edge here. It doesn't have to be perfect. I just kind of gather everything from the edges, and then do it again. Wait for them to dive back down. Usually give them a couple of minutes to uh, react. This doesn't work as well with African night crawlers. They're much more tolerant of the light. But for my mix of the red worms, the blue worms, and the European night crawlers, it works just fine. Okay, so now we're going to remake the top layer here. Lots of budding. Okay, so that is my prepared bedding. Now let's get them some food. I'm going to put this in the middle here. That is the remainder of that melon. Some bags and I'm going to cover that out and put a little bit more bedding on top. All right, now let's grab the worms that I have been harvesting. Let me know in the comments below what you think. I don't know, a quarter pound of worms? wasn't a very big volume to start with. But now they will have a whole brand new environment for them to work on. All right, guys. Well, that is the update for the DIY bin. If you like the video, give it a muddy thumbs up. If you're not a member of my worm family, click that subscribe button. And if you want to know what I'm doing when I'm doing it, ring that bell icon. All right, guys. Thanks for hanging out with me and my worms. And everybody, have a good day.